Christ Jesus had the power, the power to forgive, the power to quicken whom he will, and make the sinner live. Christ Jesus had the power, oh, tell it far and near. Oh, bring to him your guilty heart, and grace shall banish fear. Christ Jesus had the power, the power to renew, the power to cleanse your heart from sin and make you holy true. Christ Jesus had the power forevermore to keep. Oh, none can pluck you from his hand or rob him of his sheep. Christ Jesus had the power, the power to console the power to carry all your care on him your burdens roll. Christ Jesus had the power to wipe the tear away. Oh, place in him your confidence. Oh, trust him and obey. Christ Jesus had the power, the power to destroy, the power to bruise your enemy. Who will your soul anoint? Christ Jesus had the power when on your dying bed to give you your soul the victory, the power to raise the dead. Christ Jesus had the power, the power of God he wields. Christ Jesus had the power, my heart surrender yields. Christ Jesus had the power, I trust him evermore. Christ Jesus had the power, I worship and adore. Jesus had the power, the power to renew, the power to cleanse your heart from sin and make you holy true. Christ Jesus had the power forevermore to keep. Oh, none can pluck you from his hand or rob him of the sheep. I 
Our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel Chapter 10 Chapter 10 Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the men clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory, and the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court, as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels from between the cherubims, then he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof, and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a barrel stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. 
When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel! And every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Kibar. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them. And every one stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Kibar. And I knew that they were the cherubims. Every one had four faces apiece, and every one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings, and the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Kibar, their appearances and themselves. They went every one straight forward. Chapter 11 Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house which looketh eastward. And behold at the door of the gate five and twenty men, among whom I saw Jeazaniah the son of Azer, and Pelatiah the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief, and give wicked counsel in this city, which say, It is not near, let us build houses, this city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel. For I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in this city, and ye have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Your slain whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord God. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. Ye shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof, but I will judge you in the border of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. And it came to pass, when I prophesied, that Pelatiah the son of Benaiah died, then fell I down upon my face, and cried with a loud voice, and said, Ah, oh, Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people, and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, 
and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them an heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep mine ordinances, and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city, and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city. Afterwards the Spirit took me up, and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I spake unto them of the captivity all the things that the Lord had showed me. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
I have to send that so that I can only play. But God, God's in there. Not know the things you are facing, battles ahead of victories to win. But I can tell you, His love never fails. Jesus is always a compassion, it's fresh. God's been there. Be glad that my hope is in the Lord Because He gives me confidence That the world doesn't know He's a And whatever the situation I know Because my hope is in the Lord Yeah, so I can be glad For my hope is in the Lord Because He gives me all that the world
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period. Now this is a special service, end of the year service, miracle explosion service, miracle extension service, miracle expansion service, and in your life, this will be that day, final Sunday of the year 2000. And 21, that you will always, ever remember in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord will help you. The Lord will lift you up. And the Lord will raise you up. And as he helps you, he tells you. To go and help another. The says says that we have come. And the impact of the word of God is in our lives. And if I can help somebody. Somebody in sin, bring them out. Somebody in sorrow, bring them out. Somebody suffering, bring them out. Somebody in affliction, bring them out. If I can help somebody as I journey along, then my life shall not be in vain. Your life will not be in vain. The help that comes to you will flow to other people and then they they will be helped, they will be lifted, they will be saved, they will be healed. If I can help somebody as I move along, as I journey along, then my life, tell me, your life shall not be in vain. Father, we well, thank you at this time. We well, bless your name because of your presence here. Your power here, your glory here, we well, thank you. You brought us together to do something in our lives and then through us do something in the lives of other people. We're asking, oh Lord, the faith to rise up afresh, rise up anew and live a life, a life, a promising life, a life, the promised life. A life, a prophetic life. A life, a progressive life. A life, a prospered life. Help us, Lord, that as your word penetrates our hearts and our lives, that we we'll get out of here and live a purposeful life in Jesus' name. Help us that we might help other people around us around the city, around the community, around our country, around our continent, all over the world. Do something in us that we will be able to do something in the lives of other people in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout... Bless the Lord, you can sit down. Maybe there's, there's a fourth Sunday in your life. You're having a morning worship in the open. What a wonderful time. The wonder of God will be in your life in Jesus' name. Today, as we are bringing the crusade, we're getting near the end of this great Miracle Explosion Crusade. Tonight, we'll round it up. We'll wrap it up. And come tonight, you'll never forget. As we're getting near the edge, I'm talking on one thing that expands into three, that extends 
into seven. One thing, unceasing miracles through unrelenting faith in the unlimited Christ. One thing, unceasing miracles through unrelenting faith in the unlimited Christ. Number one, unlimited Christ. The Christ who is able, the Christ who is mighty, the Christ who is glorious, the Christ that finds nothing impossible in your life. The unlimited Christ from the time he saves you, he redeems you, he adopts you into the family of God and then he becomes your forerunner. It becomes your leader, it becomes your shepherd, it becomes the captain of your salvation. Every need in your life supplied, every problem in your life solved, every need he meets he is the unlimited Christ, too. Because it's the unlimited Christ, and because he has your life, you have unceasing. Miracles, that is, miracles that start, miracles sustain, miracles that go on, miracles that nothing can hinder, that every day you expect a miracle, every day you experience a miracle, every day you have the experimentation of heaven, and miracles happen morning noon, night, every day, at work, at home, in church, unceasing miracles. One, the unlimited Christ. Two, unceasing miracles. Number three, unrelenting faith. A faith that holds on. The faith that prays, the faith that desires, the faith that demands, and the faith that says, no day will go in my life without the experience of a miracle, or relenting faith, a faith that Satan cannot conquer, a faith that situations cannot retard, a faith that nothing on earth can clamp down, cloud through, or oppress, or cover, unrelenting faith. That's how we have unceasing miracles in the unlimited, through the unlimited Christ because of the unrelenting faith. Look at your Bible in Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 23. Let us hold fast on relenting. Let us hold fast, never giving up. Let us hold fast the profession, the confession, the declaration of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful. That promise, verse 38, says, The just shall live. By faith. That's how healing becomes permanent. The just shall live by faith. That's how the joy of the Lord is your strength every time. The just shall live by faith. That's how we walk on the stormy waters of life. And when the lion, the roaring lion comes against us, we don't turn back. We stand there. And look at that running lion face to face. And we stand by faith. Every lion in this world will run away from you. The judge shall live by faith as you live your personal life. A victorious life. A vigilant life. A life that is triumphant. The judge shall live by faith in your family. Between husband and wife. Wife and uh, husband, parents and children, we don't walk by sight. The judge shall live by faith in your profession. 
anywhere you are walking everything the lord has decided that you will have how do you have not by force not by violence not by protests not by fighting the just shall live by faith and as you live your spiritual life moral life emotional life anywhere you are all alone by yourself or with other people the just shall live by faith you will live you have not just been managing life throughout life but the just shall live abundant life shall live by faith hebrews 11 reading from verse 6 it tells us without faith in the morning without faith in the afternoon without faith in the evening without faith in the church without faith outside the church without faith in your family without faith in the community without faith in this evil world without faith it's impossible to please god for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder he will reward you today it will add something to your life every day miracle to your life every day joy to your life every day because you believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him honestly seek him passionately seek him zealously seek him he the almighty god is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 it tells us looking unto jesus you're not looking at cancer you're not looking at ulcer you're not looking at something moving about in the body you're not looking at all the deprivations you're not looking at disease you're not looking at what the story the world is telling you're not looking at all the mishaps happening around you if you look at them you're looking at the stormy sea and when the disciples looked at the stormy sea they began to sink but in all situations at all times in the midst of friends in the midst of enemies whatever enemy might be doing and whatever ocean might be raging around you looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of her faith oh for the joy that was set before him endured the cross endured the cross everyone has a cross to carry and the songwriter tells us carry your cross with a smile have you discovered if you have any cross and you're carrying that cross and you mourn and you cry the cross becomes heavier when you cry when you are discouraged when you are depressed when you're asking question why me the cross becomes heavier but when you see i'm not looking at the cross i'm looking at christ the author and the finisher of my faith your cross becomes lighter i said your cross becomes lighter it will be uh, eventually it comes like the feather of a bird that you don't even feel the weight on your shoulder anymore because you endure that cross and you bear that cross with a smile despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god that's what the lord is talking about to us today unlimited christ giving us unceasing miracles because of unrelenting faith we're looking at seven things 
I've told you three. Now we're going to expand to seven. Number one, the marvels through the marvels of salvation for pardoned sinners. The marvels of salvation for pardoned sinners. The Lord has come to give freedom, forgiveness, salvation free of charge. Free of charge. Even today, if you have not got that salvation free of charge, the marvels of salvation will be reproduced in your life even today in Jesus' name. Why? Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Look at that. Future. At that time, Mary was pregnant. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus shall. For he shall save his people from their sins. But now, he has brought forth a son. It has happened already. Christ is born. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And you will call his name Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And the government, the government of your life shall be upon a shoulder. It was in the future she shall bring forth a son. He, she has now brought forth the son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. It has happened now. We have called his name Jesus. Born Jesus. The angel that appeared to Mary, angel Gabriel, he called him Jesus. And all the angels that sang, we just heard it now. In Luke chapter 2, they called his name Jesus. And then all the people, the disciples, and all the sinners that came, they called him Jesus. The blind man called him Jesus. Already is now born and is for you. It's raining and is for you. And his name must now be called Jesus, for he shall save. That was the future then. Now he has saved his people from their sins. You will be among the number. I said you will be among the number. In verse 23, it tells us, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. I shall bring forth a son, and thou and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted, is God with us. God with us. At that time it was prophetic, but now it's a performance. And when he appeared to his own disciples after his resurrection. He said, all power on earth, in heaven, is given unto me. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that have commanded you. Look at this. And behold, I am with you. God with us. Power with us. Glory with us. And the expected miracle of God with us. He says, you call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. That Christ is here today. His salvation is here today. His healing is here today. His power is there today. 
how do I experience that? Number one, the marvels of salvation for pardoned sinners. We're looking at Romans chapter 10 and reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, he was born, that's not the end. He lived a perfect, righteous, holy life, that's not the end. He was weak at Gethsemane, that's not the end. He died on the cross, that's not the end. He was raised up again. And if you will confess with your mouth the Lordship of Christ, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Salvation is for you. In verse 10, it tells us in verse 10, for with the heart, man believeth. Man, man, you put your name there. It's for every man, it's for every woman, it's for every human. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Number two now, the medicine for healing of persistent sicknesses. That's number two. The unceasing miracles. The unstoppable miracles. The miracles that continue. Number one, your salvation. Number two, your healing. And what's the medicine for the healing? Whatever the sickness, whatever the pain, whatever the plague, whatever the challenge, what's the medicine for healing? Look at Proverbs chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4. We're looking at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them, and health, that word health there also means medicine, and medicine to all thy flesh is the word. The word created man at the beginning, and when anything goes wrong, with the body it is the word that acts like medicine and that medicine comes and then we're healed that's why we're told in matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 8 and the centurion said i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof speak the word only. Why? Because that's the medicine. For any incurable disease, that's the medicine. For all long-standing illnesses, speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he tells us that when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, unto them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great faith 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 cometh by hearing hearing by the word of god it is the faith you have that mixes with the word the mixing from heaven and then whatever the name of the sickness you are healed. That healing is here today. 
have not found so great faith no not in israel look at verse 13 in verse 13 and jesus said unto the centurion go thy way as thou hast believed as thou hast believed as thou hast believed that's that's what life is that's how miracles come as thou has believed if you need healing as thou has believed if you need um, a kind of perfect hell that every day you wake up you wake up in the health and the strength of the lord as thou has believed if you're looking for job as thou has believed you want to get married as thou has believed the word of promise comes to you and when you believe that it becomes the word of power and when you hold on in faith it remains the word of performance in your life as thou hast believed so be done unto thee and his servant was healed in the cell same hour that's the way it will happen to you I say that's the way it will happen to you Jeremiah chapter 30 I'm reading from verse 13 Jeremiah chapter 30 we're looking at verse 13 there is none to plead thy cause before Christ came Abraham had died by this time Moses had died by this time Elijah the great prophet had died by this time of Jeremiah and the Jeremiah that could help them and play for them they put him in the dungeon and now there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up that thou and thou hast no healing medicine but now Christ has come. I said Christ has come. The healer has come. The deliverer has come. The redeemer has come. Amen. In your family, amen. In your life, amen. Look at what that amen now produces verse 17 in verse 17 for i will restore health unto thee christ has now come the healer has now come the word from heaven has now come in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and it is through that word that word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld this glory the glory of the only begotten of the father and is full of truth and full of grace and he says now i will restore health unto thee i will heal thee of thy wounds says the lord because they called thee an outcast saying this is zion whom no man seeketh after but thank god mercy for your healing remedy for your healing recovery from your sickness all that has come now and you'll experience it in jesus name number three is the mortification of self for profitable selflessness you know in our lives after we are saved good salvation real salvation in no soul salvation the salvation that says i know that i know that i know that i am saved the sin problem is dealt with by the cross for the convert but there's still something that something can be manipulated by satan and hinder our progress it's called self living for self running for self competing for self 
fighting for self and pursuing self every time that we don't think about the good of that other person we think about our own good alone self it hinders joy in marriage self it hinders progress in a profession self it kills the man with envy and jealousy self that's why one of the miracles the lord wants to perform is the mortification of self for profitable selflessness look at jeremiah chapter 45 the first part of verse 5 and seekest thou great things for thyself you know you can see great things for the lord i want to evangelize i want to expand the kingdom of god i want many souls to be saved i'm seeking great things for the lord you can seek great things for other people i want them lifted i want them happy i want them joyful i want them successful i want them progressing you can seek great things for our country for your country i want our country to come out of this terrible situation in which they are you're seeking great things for other people but there are people saved from sin and every prayer they pray every pursuit they have every action they manifest is seeking great things for themselves if others are sad that's okay for them once i'm happy if others are down that's okay for them if i am up but the lord is saying the miracle of the hour and the miracle of the year he wants to perform in every life is the mortification of self for profitable selflessness seekest thou great things for thyself seek them not seek great things just for yourself happiness just for yourself joy just for yourself fulfillment just for yourself and then you clamp down on others you trample on others you walk over others you don't even look back because you are so consumed with self the lord is telling us a way to carry miracle and a way to possess miracle and a way to preserve miracle that for yourself you are not seeking uh, gratification satisfaction promotion only for yourself that the husband is not seeking greatness at the expense of the wife that the wife is not seeking greatness at the expense of the husband that the children are not seeking satisfaction and promotion happiness and joy at the expense of the parents that the member of the church is not seeking gratification exaltation at the expense of other members we're told in philippians chapter 2 reading from verse 3 philippians chapter 2 verse 3 let nothing be done through strife of vain glory the people who are vain as they glorify themselves they're full of self the people who strive or fight when things are not going their way they're full of self he wants us to understand that it's a great miracle when self is crucified and self is destroyed in your life let nothing be done through strife of vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each 
esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4, verse 4 says, look not every man on his own things. You see, we are different. Our callings are different. Our responsibilities are different. Our purpose and pursuit in life are different. And when you concentrate on the success of your own section alone, and you put down the others, your success will not be retained. But when you are not looking for isolated success because of self, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He gave his life for others, he healed others, he saved others, he lived for others, he provided for others. Even when he was hungry and thirsty, he was still thinking of others, helping others. Let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mortification of self for profitable selflessness. Number four now. Number four, the marks of sanctification in purified saints. You see, it's a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. Healing is a miracle. Mortification of self and living a selfless life, that's a miracle. Sanctification. When God, through Christ, purifies our hearts and we are sanctified and the old Adamic nature is dealt with in our heart, in our lives and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. That is a miracle and I pray that that miracle of sanctification will be in your life will be in our lives every time everywhere in jesus name and the sanctification will not be left in the church on the pew after we have heard the word of god after we have prayed and we claim to be sanctified as we go back home the wife the husband the parents, the children will manifest sanctification and will not leave the sanctification only in our hearts. I know I'm sanctified. I know I'm sanctified. As we go to our places of work, we take the sanctification along with us as we deal, as we relate to other co-workers. And we relate to other travelers in the bus, in the taxi. As we relate with our bosses in the place of work. As we relate with our subordinates in the place of work. The sanctification will be evident. And then in our attitude, in our mood, the sanctification will be reflected. But you know, if we claim I am saved, I am sanctified, and the mood on our faces shows anger, and shows revenge, and shows retaliation, and yet every time we're singing of sanctification, Jesus only, and Jesus ever, Jesus all in all was sing is a savior was sing is a healer was sing is a sanctifier was sing but our faces don't show that sanctification our moods don't show that sanctification our reaction 
when things happen, don't show that sanctification. We have left the sanctification in the church. And we're empty. And we're just going through life. But when this miracle happens, it will happen. I said it will happen. There will be the marks of sanctification in purified saints. We're told in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 3. It says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. This is the will of God, even your sanctification personal it's like he says this is the will of god even your salvation it's like he says this is the will of god even your healing can you say my wife is not claiming healing so i also will not be healed you don't say that my wife is not demonstrating salvation therefore i also i reject salvation you don't say that why do you say my husband is not manifesting sanctification he's always angry and he's retaliating if you do a little thing here he complains every time there's no peace at home all right since my husband is not manifesting sanctification, I too will not have sanctification. You can't say that for you, whatever others do. For you, whatever others lack. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. That will it will be fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Now. There are people that say they don't preach sanctification in their church. And Christ is offering them, he said, I died for you so that I can sanctify you. He said, thank you, Jesus. My pastor doesn't make much of sanctification. Our church doctrine does not make much of sanctification thank you jesus i understand your mind i understand your heart you're providing sanctification but i cannot get it from you because our pastor in our church does not talk about that you exalt your pastor you exalt your sunday school teacher above christ christ died for it christ paid for it and Christ has provided it that he might sanctify and cleanse it of the washing of water by the word. In verse 27, it says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot. Look at your life. Are you free of those spots? The spots we find in the world, the blemish we find in the world, the arrogant attitude we find in the world, the language, dirty language we find in the world, the thought, the evil thought we find in the world, the action, the retarding action, retrogressive action that we find in the world, that's what sanctification wants to remove. That's what Christ died for. Christ did not die for you, that you remain the way you have always been, talking the way you have always spoken, and acting the way you have always acted. He provided sanctification that he might present the church unto himself. 
a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, that's the mark of the old man. When people are getting old, 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 older, you begin to see wrinkles. And it's the evidence and the mark of the old nature or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Amen. Your life holy and without blemish. Amen. Your family holy and without blemish. Amen. Number five. Thank you, boy. Number five, the mantle of the supernatural from the powerful Holy Spirit. The mantle of the supernatural from the powerful spirit. Let me ask you a question. You know about the Holy Spirit. You know about his indwelling power. You know about his enveloping power. You know about his weakening power. You know about the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. You know it in the head. Is it in your heart? We have a few men, a few women in the Bible that had the power of the Holy Ghost. We can talk about Moses and we can see Pharaoh could see the manifestation of that power. We know about Joshua that Moses laid hands on and he received the spirit that was on Moses and we can see the evidence and we know about Elijah Elijah that stood didn't run away from the enemy didn't run away from persecution we know about Elijah we know about Elisha and we can see the manifestation and the moving of the Holy Ghost in his life we know about David and then we come to the New Testament we know about John the Baptist we know about 120 in the upper room they add the Holy Ghost on them and we can see the evidence now if you claim to have the mantle of the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost where is the evidence a cockroach makes you afraid not Elijah a rat makes you afraid not Elisha and news you have not even seen anything and they say enemy 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 imaginary and you cannot go out you cannot do what you want to do not Elisha Elisha said fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them if truly you have the power of the Holy Ghost show the evidence by the way you live by the way you talk by the way you plan by the places you go by the way you stand and by the way you are able to face whatever it is to face in life this is a great miracle the mantle of the supernatural from the powerful holy spirit look at second kings chapter 2 verse 8 second kings chapter 2 verse 8 and elijah took his mantle and he wrapped it together and he smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so they too went over on dry ground give me a good amen, amen. you will move forward amen. oh a river is before me river jordan is before me have the holy ghost power and stand by the bank of river jordan that river jordan will part before you yeah. it may be a man maybe a woman maybe a company of people that have decided they want to fight against the plan of god in your life and the purpose of god in your life 
Well, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you look away from God and be looking at those few people, whoever they are. Even if Pharaoh will join Sennacherib and will join the Padnesa and join Herod and the old team together and they are standing before you as a formidable Jordan. Have the power of the Holy Ghost, that power will part them. And so he took his mantle, wrapped it together, and he smote the river. And then they went on dry ground. Verse 9, in verse 9, and it came to pass when they were gone over, like I am going over. I say, like I am going over. I'm leaving fear behind. I am going over. I'm leaving problem behind. I am going over. I'm leaving Jordan behind. I am going over. I lost my people. I am going over. You know, if you could remember everything the Lord wants to do in your life, and the purpose why he called you, like he called Elisha on purpose. And all those 50 prophets, sons of the prophets, they were asking him questions. They didn't go to Elijah. They were going to Elisha. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? He said, please, hold your peace. I'm going over. Hold your peace. I am going over. Somebody there. Somebody there. You know, if all of us here, all of us here, let me see the poem I'm talking about. Where are you? If all of us here, if all of us here will have salvation, have our healing, have the mortification of self, have our sanctification, have the mantle of the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost in our lives, why not? We can turn this nation around. But we read the news, we're afraid. We see the people on the streets, we're afraid. We hear the radio, we're afraid. We see the television, we're afraid. We hear this is happening, that is happening. Instead of coming out, we lock up ourselves. If the power will come upon everyone here today, we we'll stand like a mighty army. We move on like a mighty army, my brother. When you stand like that, there'll be a fellow believer. He doesn't have the power, the vision, the seal, the passion of the Holy Ghost. There'll be a fellow believer. They'll be pulling your shirt at the back. The world is bad. The community is bad. That place is dangerous. The best anyone can do now is to lock up himself, lock up herself, and stay indoor. You don't have the mantle. I have the mantle. I said I have the mantle. And so, when you have the mantle, you will go over. You will make progress. You'll not be afraid what people do, what people say, how people hinder, and the imaginary news you are hearing, you forget everything. Are we ready to go over? I said, are we ready to go over? It came to pass when they had gone over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what? I shall do for thee before I be taken from thee. And Elisha said, Elisha said, they were in the open, they were not inside the church building. And Elisha said, Well, Elijah, let's hurry up. The sun is biting. And we're sweating a lot. Uh uh, that one doesn't come into the equation. Anybody wanting to get the mantle? Anybody wanting to have the supernatural power of God? Even in the open will say, One thing I desire. 
and that will I seek after that the mantle of power will come upon me it will come upon your life and so he said Elisha said I pray thee let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me a double portion of thy spirit be upon me amen, amen. check up your bible from that chapter 2 manifestation of power through elisha chapter 3 chapter 4 chapter 5 chapter 6 manifestation of power on elisha can i prophesy upon your life that from this day everything that terrified you before intimidated you before every army of the assyrians that will make you to turn back every time you wanted to make a progress now those enemies are behind you they'll be under your feet next year this coming year great miracle the following year great miracle all the arrears of miracles you had not got in the past when you were acting like grasshopper all those arrears the lord will bring back to your life and so as you look at elisha even after he died everything god wanted to do through his life had not finished and then he died and said the lord had said i confirm it a double portion of your life of miracles upon your life now when you read the life of elijah and his ministry the life of elisha and his ministry by the time elisha died it had not completed the double miracle it remained one that when you now look at elisha you'll find the double manifestation of the miracle but now he died but the word of god will be fulfilled and they buried him and they didn't cover the tomb and somebody had died and when they wanted to bury that person that died they saw a band running after them and in their hurry they dropped the dead man in the tomb of elisha and the final miracle that will complete the double manifestation of elisha's miracle on or above that of elijah that thing happened that dead body got up and came alive i thought you'll be excited and that same power will be upon your life in jesus name that's why jesus said wait tarry in jerusalem until you are baptized in the holy ghost First John baptized with water, even so will you be baptized in the Holy Ghost and you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria then to the uttermost part of the earth. They tarried, they prayed the mantle of the supernatural from the powerful holy ghost came upon them it will happen to you too number six now number six the motivation for soul seekers with persevering zeal the motivation for soul seekers with persevering zeal by the grace of god that same motivation upon paul the apostle and peter philip and the rest of them this is our time 
Your time has come. My time has come. A motivation from within. Not somebody making an announcement and pushing us and pulling us and, you know, almost crying on the pulpit. Let us evangelize. When you have everything you ought to have and the motivation comes from heaven, you'll be a soul winner. You'll be a soul seeker. And then many will come into the kingdom of God through you in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 1, verse 14. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Then in verse 15, so as much as in me is as long as i'm alive as long as the vision keeps burning as long as the fire unquenchable is still burning within me as much as in me is i am ready to preach the gospel the good news of salvation the good news of grace the good news of redemption. I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. And then in verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed. That's the problem. We meet a stranger. We can talk about every other thing, about what's happening in our country, about security and whatever else about pandemic and whatever else that's what we can talk about freely but when it comes to the gospel and the good news and sharing that and telling of jesus how he died on the cross of calvary and how that salvation is now brought unto everyone and this person is also a candidate for the salvation of god uh-huh our mouths now are closed. We cannot talk. We are ashamed before the stranger. We are even surprised a wife has got this salvation. And there is peace of God in the heart. And the joy of salvation is present within. And then gets back home. And the husband is still like he was before. Always moody, always fearful, always complaining, uh, and the joy of the Lord is in the wife. What has changed your life can change his life. Or turn it around, is the husband who has got the salvation and the gospel, and the wife has not got it, or is a relative that has not got it, and you have got it. Why is it you can talk about family matters, you are not ashamed? You can talk about old, old ideas. When you were younger, you're not ashamed. But now, the gospel of Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, I pray all the shame that has tied us down and closed our mouths that we could not talk to other people about redemption, about forgiveness, about new life in Christ. All that shame will vanish away in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 13, verse 10. In Mark, Chapter 13, verse 10, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. Think about many things in your life. You cannot say this must be done before Christ will come. No, Christ is not going to wait for all those things. I'm waiting for this, waiting for this, waiting for that. There's one thing that must be done that must be done this gospel 
the gospel of the kingdom must first be published among all nations other things might have to be brushed aside other things we might have to forego but that this one thing needful the gospel must first be published among all nations i pray you'll be a participant among the people that are taking the gospel to all nations in jesus name mark chapter 16 verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature verse 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned i pray you will not be damned you'll be among the believers do you notice that he that believeth you believe on the crusade field but that's not the end you keep on believing and believing and believing even after the crusade he that believeth he keeps on believing he keeps on professing he keeps on declaring christ is my savior and lord he that believeth and is baptized after the crusade all the various local churches in every country in every community they'll make arrangement for you to be baptized in water if you have not been baptized in water he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe today as you are going back home as you are living your life and you keep on believing every day this sign shall follow them that believe in my name you will cast out devils in his name you speak with new tongues verse 18 in his name if you take up serpents that is if serpents snakes come across your way mention the name of jesus that snake will either run away or if the snake is stubborn the snake will die right there yeah. and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover verse 19 tells us so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of god and was seated with him now on the right hand of god he has conquered he has destroyed all the powers of the enemy and as we are seated with him enemies are under your feet verse 20 it says and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them the lord walking with me the lord walking with you the lord walking with the men the lord walking with the women the lord walking with the high the lord walking with the low the lord walking with them everywhere confirming the word were signs for doing give an amen that will bring manifestation it'll confirm the word of your mouth it'll confirm the message coming from you anywhere you go in jesus name number seven now is the mystery of supernatural translation for his prepared saints the lord is about to come and all of us 
who have come to the Lord during this crusade, all who came before, all who believe that Christ is their Savior and is their Lord when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive will be changed will be transformed will be transfigured and then translated to heaven you will be there when the saints go marching in who will be there who will be there that hope will be confirmed in jesus name first corinthians 15 51 behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed verse 52 it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we and we and we and we shall be changed i will be there i will be there brother there are you there will you be there you will make the rapture my sister my brother my son my daughter what you are waiting for now is the coming of the lord from the air how i praise the lord that the lord will prepare you he will qualify you he will make you ready your salvation will not be in vain your following the lord will not be in vain miracles in your life will not be in vain on that final day praise the lord you will see me i will see you we shall be forever with the lord in jesus name rise up now rise up and let's talk to the lord let's take everything we've heard to the lord in prayer and say lord here i am here i am i know my christ is unlimited and i know the miracles are unceasing and i know my faith is unrelenting tell the lord all these things that unrelenting faith will produce that they'll be yours open your mouth and tell the lord The marvels of salvation, it changes our lives, that's a marvel. The things we used to do, we do them no more, that's a marvel. New life, new thought, new mind, new direction in life, new language, marvels. The marvels of salvation transformation new creature new behavior new character marvels of salvation as it pardons you cleanses you turns your life around marvelous salvation marvelous transformation Marvelous newness of life. Medicine for healing or persistent sicknesses. The word is the medicine. Take in the word. Accept the word. Believe the word. Hold on to the word. The word. Or the sickness want us to go when the word comes in that sickness has to go is the cure for the incurable the medicine 
against every sickness, every disease, medicine for healing. Speak the word only. My servant shall be healed. If saint is word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. The mortification of self. Self injures you more than you injure other people. Self delays your progress. Self destroys your chances. Self scatters families. Self takes away from you what you have gained. The mortification of self for profitable selflessness. You have the mind of Christ. He submitted himself, he humbled himself, and made himself a servant. And the Lord has highly exalted him that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every nation bow. The marks of sanctification. Sanctification in the head does not bear fruit. Sanctification in the mouth does not bear fruit. And your face will betray you. The look of anger, your attitude will betray you. The attitude of pride, arrogance, to betray you. That the sanctification is only in the head, not in the heart. Your pursuit, pursuing glory for yourself, will betray you. That you have led the sanctification in the church. You don't carry it home. Always irritated by non essentials. Always fighting for non essentials. Forgetting heaven, forgetting holiness. Religious. But not inwardly righteous. When there's real sanctification, the marks will show. And the mantle of the supernatural from the powerful Holy Spirit. When the mantle came on Elisha, all those servants knew, they saw it, and they said, the power of Elijah has come on Elisha. It will be evident in your life, when the power is there, you're not afraid of the cockroach, afraid of the rat, afraid of the old woman, afraid of your neighbor, afraid of members and you tremble 
before a fellow man, before a member of the church, and you don't tremble as much before the God of heaven. You're too man conscious, and you're not God conscious. A heart will be the driving force in your life, not the ancient of days. The mantle of the supernatural, it shall receive power, not weakness. It shall receive power, not fearfulness. It shall receive power, not timidity. It shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. The motivation for soul seekers with persevering zeal. You reach out to others and you compel them to come in. You talk to sinners, you plead for them earnestly that they should repent. And because you have the power of the Holy Ghost, it will have effect on them. They will come to the Lord. And then, when the great mystery will happen, behold, I show unto you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. A glorious amen. Miracle Explosion Crusade. Amen. The amen that makes you a possessor. It's of those blessed hands, anointed hands. From this time, anytime you have any challenge, you lay the hand on your chest and the problem will go where it came from. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you have given us Jesus, and he is unlimited. We thank you because from now on, there will be unceasing, unstoppable miracles in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because you have killed our faith. And our faith is now unwavering, unrelenting, undeniable. We're asking, O oh Lord, that this new kind of faith you put in us now will overcome every moment in Jesus' name. Confirm in every life the marvels of salvation. The medicine for healing, the mortification of cell, confirm in every life the marks of sanctification, and confirm the mantle of supernatural power. Give everyone the motivation for soul seeking, and we pray, Lord, when that mystery will take place. And the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and the believers who are alive shall be changed and transformed and caught away to be with the Lord forever and ever. Every child of God here, every child of God there, online, everywhere, 
we will go with the Lord in Jesus name the doors of heaven are open to everyone I will pray as we believe as we enter in nothing will deny any of us the glorious great marvelous wonders coming to every believer in Jesus name joy for everyone peace for everyone purity for everyone power for everyone zeal in everyone and as we go through life the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone in Jesus name you are a possessor you are a partaker and the power of the Lord will never stop in your life confirmation Lord in every life in Jesus name we pray